Good Monday morning. Welcome to the broadcast. Uh, news over the weekend about the second Ebola patient here in Dallas, the first patient to contract the disease here locally. So we have invited in our friend, Dr. James Pinckney from Diamond Physicians to, to break this down for us, help um, alleviate some of the concern that people are having this morning. Well, the good news is that the 48 contacts that came in contact with uh, Mr. Duncan aren't displaying any signs or symptoms of Ebola. Now, this first transmission that we've had on U.S. soil did occur at Presbyterian Hospital, and that patient is in quarantine right now and in isolation. I answer this question for me because my biggest concern is, and what I can't wrap my head around, here is someone who was seemingly protected. They claim she was following protocol in the hospital. And then you've got his family members who were, you know, probably cleaning up after Thomas Duncan, the first victim who passed away, um, clean, probably in direct contact with some of his bodily fluids, and they all seem to be doing okay. So how can those people be okay? And then someone who's protected and seemingly in the best shape to not get the disease, get the disease? You know, that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, and as the disease progresses, as Ebola becomes uh, more in the bloodstream, the patient gets sicker, you have higher viral loads. So as the patient, patient becomes more and more sick, mm -hmm. becomes more and more infectious. Got it. So unfortunately, you know, she had protective gear on, but there was a breach in protocol at some point. Mm -hmm. We don't know exactly what happened, but the CDC is uh, performing an investigation right now. What could it be, though? I mean, what, what could it be? Is she, it could be as simple as just taking off the... Yeah, I think the most logical theory um, would be when you remove the protective gown. So you've got gloves. Gloves are elastic. Uh, you've got blood on your hands possibly vomit, feces, anything that contains the virus, when you take off that glove, you can snap that elasticity and it could spray into your eyes, to your nose, into any mucous membranes. That's probably the most likely thing that happened. And the nurse, unfortunately, would never know mm -hmm. because you're talking about very small uh, drop of blood. Okay, and, and that makes it sound it to, to me blood, like it's easy to get. it also be some kind of blood or you talk about like any fluid? It yeah. can be yeah. urine, feces. Um, there's not a lot of high viral load in saliva. saliva. Okay. So it's not an airborne okay. virus. I want to reiterate that. All right. Um, but, you know, you have to come in close contact with bodily fluids. So right. I, I doubt that she had a needle stick because she would have reported that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dr. James, that's my question. They've been telling us, they being the CDC, the medical profession, telling us for weeks how hard it is to get Ebola. But what you just explained sound like it was pretty darn easy. In taking off some protective gear, she may have contracted it. So, so when, when, when should we be concerned? Well, she's a healthcare worker. So right. healthcare providers like myself and other nursing staff are going to have direct contact, mm -hmm. which we do every day. Patients with HIV, hepatitis, communicable diseases, mm -hmm. tuberculosis. So we're used to that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, she made a mistake. And mistakes happen. I've stuck myself with the needle before. And mm -hmm. luckily, there was no transmission. But mistakes happen. Right. Mm -hmm. So is this a disease that could mutate? And in, is, can this virus become airborne? Can it become more easy to, to transmit? Uh, that's also a great question. Um, very, very low probability. Viruses can mutate, but you have to have evolutionary pressure. This is a very virulent virus. It's spread fairly easily with blood-to-blood -blood contact. So there's no pressure for it to mutate to a respiratory type mm -hmm. virus. There's proteins that the virus uses to attach to cell membranes, and they have to completely reconfigure to attach to the mucous membranes in the uh, pulmonary tree. So what, I'm sorry, I was just going to get to a couple of our Facebook questions because yeah. we did have some of our viewers um, writing in and concerned about some things. And you, you touched on this, but let's reiterate because Lucy Lugo asked if there was an issue with removing the suit, does that mean just skin contact alone is enough to contract no, the virus? No, When she was removing the suit, she had to have gotten mm -hmm. some type of blood, feces, vomit um, into a mucous membrane. Or so, if she had a cut on her hand exactly. or something Or if she like had a cut and, and rubbed some of the contaminated material on a cut. Not skin to skin is not going to transmit the virus. How long can the virus live on her skin? So if she's taken off her gloves, something splattered, she didn't notice it, how long can it stay alive on her skin? Uh, the skin, I wouldn't call that an ideal environment. In an ideal environment, up to six days, but she's going to be washing her hands, rubbing, so you know, maybe she scrubbing. Like, like maybe she rubbed her nose or she rubbed her eye. Exactly. Or she could have had a particle really on her finger, touched. It loves the lower eyelid, the, uh, the conjunctival, we call it. That's a great place for the virus to enter the, to the, into the body. A myriad of things could have happened, and hopefully the CDC will give us some answers in the next. Okay. Now we keep hearing so. about dogs in the in the fact that dogs may be able to carry Ebola. Is this correct? Uh, dogs can be carriers, but we've never had a transmission from a canine. Only bats and, and primates. So I think the fear is that um, the the virus can live in the dog's feces. So mm -hmm. high viral load. Um, so I, I'm, it's a tough question what to do with the dogs. I know the dog in Spain, unfortunately, put that dog down. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we've never had a, we never had transmission via canines. And do we know exactly girl, what they're giving her right now? 
how, how she's doing and what they're giving her um, right now? Right now, there's no cure for Ebola. So right now, she's probably receiving just supportive care. Fluids, so I, IVs, exactly. stuff of that IV nature. Exactly, IV fluids. Right now, her, her vitals are stable. She's in stable condition. So I, I don't think they're having any medication to keep her blood pressure up. But uh, Ebola causes hemorrhagic fever. So it actually destroys your blood vessels. Mm -hmm. It attacks what's called the endothelial cells and causes capillary leak. So it breaks down your blood vessels. You start leaking fluid in the spaces where it shouldn't be. You can bleed through venipuncture sites, through your mouth, through your nose. That's more rare, but that's kind of the process that happens, mm -hmm. is capillary leak. Is there syndrome. any vomiting or diarrhea that comes with this? Yes, those are some of the signs and symptoms, the earlier signs and symptoms. Early, and then uh, it gets into heavy fever. Fever, uh, just feeling bad, malaise, and then that hemorrhagic fever starts to But they to caught her out. early. She had a fever, and she knew right, right. away that she right. needed to be seen. So, so you know, it's good that they caught it early, and we'll have to monitor and see yeah. how she does. Yeah. Uh, but typically, after six to eight days is when you start seeing that, that virulence mm -hmm. kick up a notch, and you start getting really sick, and then you, oh, then yeah. you, you, know, you kind of uh, descend quite quickly. Dr. James, just Jeez. real quickly, the one thing that you'd like to tell people, so to calm everyone's fears a little yes. bit. Right. I think the, the good news is that the 48 contacts that had direct contact with Mr. Duncan uh, don't have any signs or symptoms. The sheriff, the sheriff deputy, uh, he doesn't have Ebola, he's fine, so that's the good news. We have a contained incident at Presbyterian Hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, she's in quarantine, she's receiving treatment. I think that's what we should take home. The odds of a, of a pandemic are extremely rare. Our healthcare system is phenomenal here, light years ahead of the healthcare system in West Africa. Wash your hands. Okay. Hand hygiene is critical. Okay. Critical. Don't stay home if you're sick. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming oh, today on such late notice. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, when the broadcast returns, we have one of our favorite friends here, besides Dr. James. Nancy Lieberman is here, and she's going to share some news on how her latest project includes teaming up with a golf superstar. Hey, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs>